Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to my channel. This is Carmen with Elemental Designs. Today we're going to be working on a start to finish. Um, we're going to be working on another clock. I'm just going to give people time to come in while I start to get myself ready. Can you make it so that this doesn't dim out? It keeps dimming out. You mean dim out? You know how it goes um, to screen mode, like a screen saver or whatever? Screen mode. Like the good start. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so, hello, hello, Sasson. So we have this, um, I put everything in this box. Um, I already took the clock apart. So then we're gonna be working with the Stamperia. I'm gonna just put this glass here for right now. We're gonna be working with the Stamperia. I already um, cut out some papers from the Mechanical Sea World paper pad. And I already cut out the shape here because I'm not gonna be using all of this. I'm just gonna be using most likely a piece of this and then filling in the rest. And here we have our clock. And like I said, I haven't done anything to this. I wanted the whole um, process to be somewhat organic today. So I didn't really do um, a lot of work. I didn't do any work, actually. <laughs> I just threw stuff in a box. So we're going to be working with the cure, um, the quick cure clay by Ranger. I don't have much clay left. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do before we even get started is that I'm going to go ahead and gesso this clock so I can put it to the side. And then we're going to start molding and working. Um, actually, no, I'm going to... I think I'm going to start molding it before I gesso this service because I need to know exactly what I have um, to work with. So we're going to go ahead and get some of this molding done. And then we're going to get started with everything. This is going to be a little bit of a steampunk version. I did go ahead and cut out um, some gears, and I still have some pieces left over from the clock that I did um, for the hop. So... I still have some of those pieces left over. I don't want to make this too, too, like, crazy, but I have a whole bunch of little things here and there. I have other things kind of scattered around. Um, and I've pulled out some molds uh, to see what we do with it and how we end up working this whole situation out. So for the theme for this uh, for this clock, to go with the, the mermaid that I created, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more steampunk-ish, if you will. I'm going to have to cut that corner out, but I'll cut that out in a minute. I just want to kind of see where everything is going to kind of be in relationship to this clay that I'm about to work with. So I don't have much clay left because I did um, sculpt the mermaid tail and I sculpted some other pieces using this clay, but we still have enough. We still have quite an amount here that we can go ahead and play with and, you know, get creative with. So this is a quick cure clay. Um, if this is the first time that you've been to my channel, this is the first time that you've seen me or anybody else work with this clay before. This is a quick cure clay. And basically it's kind of like a paper clay, but what it does is that the minute that you apply some heat to it, um, you'll notice that it'll start somewhat of a chain reaction, like a curing chain reaction. And um, it'll start to smoke up and it'll start to cure and harden um, basically quite instantly. So we're going to be using this um, to go ahead and kind of get some shapes and just see if I can actually pull this whole shipwreck um, theme off using clay because I don't think I've done that version of it as yet. So we're going to see. Hello, Carrie. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to see. Um, I don't really have right now and like close to me any kinds of actual paper clay or clay playing with tools. So I'm going to use what I have which is a brayer, some um, wooden, because you're gonna want something wooden, especially if you're gonna be applying heat to this. Um, I had a big piece of cardboard. Can you give me that big piece of cardboard over there? Thank you, Angie. <laughs> and basically I'm gonna use this to create like ripples and textures and things of that nature. So I'm gonna put this here for now because I have this um, with like that laminated, uh, plastic on it, so I don't want that to melt. So I'm gonna use this for my working surface. And I have my clock here, but first I need to start kind of flattening some of this clay out. So that's what we're gonna start doing. We're gonna start flattening some of this clay out. And just like any clay, you're gonna to wanna to work it a little bit before you actually go into flattening it out or doing anything else with it, okay? So that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna to try to like, you know, mold this a little bit and get it pliable. So that when I start doing all of the things that I'm going to start doing to it, it actually 
will let me. <laughs> and this doesn't air dry, so you definitely have to apply heat to it. Um, you could leave this thing outside for days, probably. I haven't done that because this is very, this is, you know, nice clay. You don't want to just test it out like that, but I'm probably going to leave a little bit out just to see if it does at all dry, but I don't think it dries. Um, hello, hello, Monica. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, but I don't think it dries if you leave it out. So I'm just going to kind of make this a little bit pliable and we're going to just start kind of mashing this down a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to be using my brayer to kind of flatten this out. And I'm going to work it kind of like if I was working some pasta or if I was making a pie or something of that nature. And I'm just going to do the same kind of technique, you know? And I'm going to just keep stretching it out until I have a nice thickness. Now, when this cures, it does um, retain, like, you know, its thickness. So you don't want it to be too, too thick. Um, when it dries, it dries like stone. So... You'd be surprised how sturdy it is. I mean, you wouldn't want to drop it or anything, but. Let me just kind of stretch that out. And I'm going to start to get kind of like a preliminary kind of shape of what I want. How's it going, love? How you been keeping busy? <laughs> been doing any crafting? Okay, so let me try to get kind of like a preliminary kind of shape of a boat type of situation kind of happening. So I'm just going to kind of go into this like so and just start kind of removing some of the excess and kind of giving this a look. So we're going to see how this is going to kind of go. And I always do like a bowl kind of like a bowl shape for my boats. <laughs> it's like the easiest thing I can think of is making a bowl out of it. <laughs> I figured two halves make a hole, right? Yes. He definitely has been. I have seen him in action. And let me tell you, he is totally the go-to guy. So I'm going to try to kind of make this smooth as I can. And this that I think I'm going to kind of rough chop it like if it's, like if it broke. <laughs> it's shipwrecked. The ship has cracked. <laughs> the ship has cracked. So I'm going to just kind of add some cracks in here. And this is why it's sunk, because a piece went missing. I think the mermaid took it. She'd be collecting stuff, so you never know. She could have been like, hey, I like this. It's got a nice texture. Maybe I want to um, craft something with it, you know? You never know. My mermaid could be a crafter, too. she got to be collecting stuff for a reason, right? So I'm just going to kind of add, like, all these kind of, like, cracks. And I want this to look really um, beat to heck, if you will. And I had another clock there, so I was like, I might as well, because if I plan to hang this on the wall, I don't want it to be incomplete. <laughs> I need to have both. I need to have the set, right? We need to have that set going. I, I wonder what this is going to do since I am kind of taking little bits and pieces out of it. I wonder how, if it's going to, um, you know, kind of morph other than the shape that I'm trying to achieve. So that'll be interesting to see if it actually um, will retain its shape. And this part here, gotta have like a piece kind of missing out of it. But really what I'm trying to do is stretch the clay. <laughs> I'm trying to have enough clay to do the rest of the stuff. You guys, come on. <laughs> you gotta understand me, right? You gotta understand me. So let me see if I can make some straight lines, right? Let's try. And I'm looking actually for my little metal vuta. Vula, vula, vula. Yes, it is, love. It is the Ranger Quick Play. And this thing costs $19.99 on Amazon. And I'll add a quick link to this. 
after um I do this video because I forgot to add a quick link for it, but it's $19.99 for the 16 ounce. And they do have a bigger bucket, which let me tell you, after working with this, I'm so, so uber tempted to get the bigger bucket, but it costs like 50 something bucks. But honestly speaking, I think it will be worth it um, to get the bigger one because I'm loving this thing and I don't have enough. <laughs> I don't have enough. Ranger, I need a two pound bag. Ranger, I needed a two pound bag so I could do a lot of different things with it. One is not enough. So I was going to try to kind of um, get something to kind of create straight lines, but I'm going to wing it blind and all. So I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> so things might appear a little fuzzy. Things might appear a little wonky, but it's water, and that's why it looks like it's moving because the water's moving, so it creates that illusion, right? It's not that I can't see. <laughs> it's not that at all. <laughs> it's not that I can't see, you guys. It's that it's you know. That's just what happened. So. And I'm going to continue to finish using up uh, this Stamperia paper that I have. Because I didn't want it to become one of those things that I just hoard. And I went crazy, crazy. Um, basically buying up a whole bunch of stuff that is all sea themed. <laughs> so we are going to have a very sea testicle. Uh, that doesn't sound right, right? Statistical. It almost sounds like I'm saying something else. Um, but I'm not saying that, you guys. I'm not saying that at all. All right. So I'm going to put this glass back in because I need to know where my stop point is. And I'm going to put this thing back on it because the ship is going to be on the outside. And it's most likely going to burn a little bit of this plastic. I'm willing to sacrifice that because it's going to go right over it. Nobody's going to see it. So I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. But you don't want to, you know, hold the heat on something that's plastic like that. Now, if you have metal, then you're good to go. Just don't touch it right away because this thing smokes for a while. And I'm going to gingerly, <laughs> gingerly, ever so gingerly, I'm going to try to pick this up. Stay together, my little ship. Okay. It's falling apart. I should have created the holes on top of the thing instead of doing it here, but that's okay. We live and we learn. So here's my little shipwreck boat. It's all beat up. I have my glass on here. And this is going to go somewhere down here in the bottom. So I'm going to make sure to actually stuff that maybe with a little bit of tissue. And if I don't answer your questions right away, it's because I'm I'm watching this through the actual streaming software and there is a delay. And my daughter, did you ever give me the phone back? Let me see. Okay. You fixed it for me? Yeah, I fixed it. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this tissue under here because I need to create a little bit of a bulk. So I wanted to kind of um so maybe that's too much tissue girl that's too much tissue so i'm gonna get a little bit less we just want like a little ball on there so that the bow has some kind of curvature to it i need to have something where's this piece here I need a little bit of right there. Just a little tiny bit. I'm gonna put that little bit of napkin right under there. Again, just to kind of give it that texture, that look of like it's actually dimension and not flat. So we're gonna try to create that uh, dimension by doing that. And if it sticks to it, I don't really care because it's not gonna show. I'll just wet it and take whatever I can get off because it's a napkin. I just don't want my ship to look wonky. 
I want it to look like an actual shipwreck. I think I achieved that, which is, where's this? Here it is. I just kind of stick those together. Okay. And we're going to work. We're going to um, build as we go. So I'm not running on any kind of marathon, you guys. <laughs> so then we're going to take our time. We're going to take our time at all one. And we're going to build this clock. We're going to build this clock. And it might not work as a clock after I'm done, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> I got a lot of people saying, but it's not going to work as a clock afterwards. But it's okay. It's art. It doesn't have to work as a clock. I have plenty of clocks around the house. <laughs> but I don't have plenty of shipwrecks <laughs> or mermaids. Well, I have a few. I have a few. I've made quite a few. All right, so we're going to go ahead and heat this up. And once I hear that chain, once I see that that chain reaction starts, I'm going to stop the heat you know, application to it. So basically, I'm just going to move this around right now and kind of create a... Uh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Before I set it, I don't want it to be so over there. I want it to be kind of more over here. Um, the piece of my ship that has broken off, I want it to be kind of like that. And I want this part here to actually curve down a little bit so that it looks like a rounded, you know, curved out kind of object. So let me just make sure that that is what I want it to be. Because once I set this thing and it starts that reaction, there is no moving it. I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and heat this baby up. <laughs> yeah, right? Those last little minute, you know, when you notice, you're like, oh, dang it, wait, real quick. <laughs> Before that glue dries. Definitely having one of those. <laughs> so I'm going to take my time and do this project today. You know, I, I had a lot of fun doing the other one. Um, so you guys know I had a lot of fun doing the other one. Anything seeping, I love. Um, but this one, I'm going to take my time and do the whole, the whole process from start to finish. Sometimes it's harder for me to like go back in and like do those uh, second part videos. Because I get frustrated with how long it takes me to even finish up the second part. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, just forget it. I'll just do a whole one. All right, so that process has started. You can kind of see that smoke kind of started to take place. And yes, I have the glass there. Hopefully, you know, it don't do nothing. If it does, then it'll just be a porthole for reals, for reals. <laughs> I'll put the ship in the inside. <laughs> and then it'll be like a shadow box circle, like a, shadow, uh, a circle shadow box instead of a clock. <laughs> So I'm going to see more or less where this whole thing stops and then wherever it stops smoking, like wherever it didn't cross over, then I'll just apply a little bit more heat and keep working it like that. But if you're like me and you're impulsive and you like to work on your projects like right away, especially when you have like, a, a, you know, when inspiration sparks and you just have to get the, that project done, this is awesome. Now there is a smell to it um, because obviously it's curing, it's burning. So you are going to um, smell those uh, chemicals, whatever's causing that uh, chain reaction. It's a little bit strong. The first time that I smelled that, I almost fell out my chair. <laughs> but you get used to it. And I kind of like bypassed the scent because, you know, the product and the air is all so worth it. So I'm just like, oh, I'll just air it out later on. But the piece itself doesn't smell like anything once it's done. At least I don't think so. Mine's going to smell like acrylic because they're all painted now. And you can kind of tell. And that's still hot. Just so you know, you can't tell that it's hot. That is still hot because it's still actually curing through all the other layers as it's still moving. So it's still um, it's still quite hot. So I'm going to put this to the side now, and I'm going to start trying to work on the broken sail. So let me grab some of this. And this sail is going to be broken. So I'm going to make my pole from the clay itself. And this is going to be somewhat steampunkish on the inside, um, but I don't think it's going to be so much steampunkish on the outside, but we'll see. We'll see. So I think... I think that's pretty good right there. 
I'll make it a little bit thinner. You don't really need that much. That's the right thing. And I'm going to snip, snip on both sides. Well, maybe not so much the bottom, but definitely the top. Ooh, I got to hold it now. Take that tissue out of there. So you don't need that anymore. But it kind of helped to create that cavity. This I'm going to have to glue in place, but that's okay. But it's kind of looking like a shipwreck already. And it does bubble. You can see that it does bubble. It does create bubbles every now and then. I think it's probably because there's air in the clay. So make sure that if you don't want those bubbles that you need it um, really, 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 really well. Because if you don't need it well, I think you're going to get those bubbles. Um, I think all of the pieces that I've done so far have caught bubbles somehow, some way. Even if they're not really big one or too noticeable, it has caught it. I think it, it shows a lot more on this one because it's so much more thinner than what I worked with before. But it will, um, you'll definitely see that. So let me go ahead and put that in here. So I need to see more or less how big I'm going to make this. And I did cut out a circle here. So that I can have roughly the, the, the diameter of what's inside, plus the diameter of the, of the clock per se, so that I can see, okay, this is how much glass I have. Um, let me see how, how how high up I actually want this thing to be. Um, and I think that that's humongous for the <laughs> boat, right? It's like, what? When they said sail, they was trying to go like all the way around the world. Um, all right, so I think I'm going to leave that there. And actually, let me create a little ball. I don't need that much, a little tiny bit. I'm going to create like a little ball, and I'm going to stick that little ball right there. All right? Stick their little ball. Okay, so we have that. Now we're gonna work on the sails. So let me put this to the side. Put this right here for now. And for this is when the brushes are gonna come in handy. Um, let me go ahead and get my, turn this into a little ball. And then I'm gonna flatten this clay out. And as you can see, a little bit goes a long way. I still have a whole ton of clay there. I'm thinking I wasn't gonna have enough. I'm gonna need a bigger piece than that. So I'm live. I am live. Live, live, live. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and squish this up. I'm gonna add that to that in about a minute. And I'm gonna actually break that. Um, I think I'm gonna break that uh that pole. I'm gonna like snap it in half or give it the appearance that it's kind of snapped in half. And this is a lot of fun to do. This is a lot, a lot of fun to do. So I'm just gonna mix those two together. And you would think I would squeeze all the air out by braining it, but I guess not. So let's go ahead and do the beginning of this. And let's kind of start doing that. And I need a piece of it so that I can kind of stick it on there and it's already tearing we're gonna need to tear more because again this is a shipwreck the whole thing is beat to heck that's the whole point so we're gonna go ahead and just remove some of that excess clay Let's 
And like I said, it's really nice to work with. Um, it's a little sticky in the hands. It is a little sticky in the hands. Um, I feel like. It should be kind of like all tethered and and collect those little bits by all means. Group them all together. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna kind of um do that. Then I'm gonna flatten that out just a little bit more with the brayer. Kind of squeeze that out. Let me pick this up. Okay, I'm just kind of give it that. Um, let's see. Make this a little bit smaller. Now I want some more fishes in here. So I'm gonna cut out a little bit more. And this is the one part that is okay if it looks like really um, messed up in the stress because that's exactly what you're going for. So if your edges are kind of rough um, and things like that, that is actually preferred. So let's put that there. Kind of. Put that there. My nails are actually giving it a lot of texture, which I didn't necessarily think I wanted, but I'm actually kind of liking. So let me grab my little hook thing here, which is kind of. Like I said, just kind of make that look like messed up. So I'm gonna split that wood a little bit. Just kind of make that look really beat up. Like it kind of busted a little bit. I'm gonna kind of put that out there like this. I don't know if the stick itself will, will bend, but So let's go ahead and put this back on here. And we are going to kind of stick that in there. Just kind of create little ripples. Just make sure everything has a nice contact with whatever's happening behind. And now we're gonna stick some of these kind of like in here. You could also use napkins if you wanted to. And I kind of wanted to create somewhat of a ripple effect in here. I'm gonna kind of do that. Okay. 
Okay. Let me just click that in. This is not much for a poll, is it? Something's off with this thing. Not really liking how it's looking on here. So let's see. And by putting it on the ship itself, it'll make a difference for me. Let me put this down. My two pieces of pole. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So we have our ship. My little ball keeps going all over the place. So we have our ship. This actually ends up falling right in place to where you mold it at. So like literally it'll create like a little groove for itself and it'll just stay still. So we're going to put our, our boat at seven o'clock. Okay. <laughs> we're going to put it at seven o'clock. And I think maybe I need to make this a little bit longer. Maybe that's what it is. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Okay, let's go ahead and add the sail again. Let's see how I feel about it this time. Also thin that out. Let's kind of do this. Wait, no. I think that'll be good enough, actually, with a little ball right there. All right, all tethered up. So now let's go ahead and put these sticks in here so that we can create some kind of shape happening here. And let's put those in there. Put that in there. And in here. I think probably in here. Remember, this is supposed to be kind of like underwater. Underwater, there is movement. So you get away with a lot of um, instability when it comes to this kind of piece. Okay, I kind of like that. So I'm gonna use that like that. And we're gonna dry it. And I wanted to break it, but it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to break it. <laughs> I could, but I forgot to do it all over again. So it's going to go with it unbroken for now. Wait, maybe I can break it. <laughs> Let's see. Can I? Can I? Should I? Ooh, let's break that. Right there. And actually move this whole thing over. You see, this is the wonderful thing about being able to work as you kind of go. So I'm gonna kind of put that there actually. Because it kind of it's kind of resting. I'm gonna leave it like it's kind of resting here. This little ball is giving it all to me today. <laughs> every pole has a little ball on top, right? <laughs> Maybe not every pole, but most of them, right? The poles in the boats, they all have that. I don't know. I don't have, I've never been on a boat. So only what I've seen in pictures. I think that they all have that, so. All right, so now that I've kind of broken that and done that, now I'm gonna go ahead and re-add my little sticks. You can do this with yours as well. And I'm just kind of giving the fabric movement by adding these sticks in there. 
kind of so that it looks like the water is still somehow affecting it or making it move. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Thank you, thank you, Sasso. Let's not let that move too much. And once the curing process starts, then I'll be able to let this kind of go. And it has started. So. Once this part of it gets hard, I can take this stick out. It's climbing right now. Oh, you're cooking as well. Oh, I did that today. I did pernil. Pernil with moro de gandules. Spanish rice with peas. It's okay. <laughs> no worries, love. I'm so into what I'm doing that I'm hardly looking up. So you're good to go. So it's smoking. I'm going to let it finish doing what it's going to do. I have noticed that as it cures, it can shift your piece. So this is why I'm trying to do it while it's still on the base so that it can at least, you know, capture whatever little grooves it's got to capture. Um, already set itself, you know, however it's going to set itself. And then this is going to be hot for a little bit. And then we're going to go into the next, into the next things. And it is almost done. I think I have to cure that part. It didn't cure. The little broken piece. I'm going to step that up. And you can kind of see it once it starts. You can see the chain reaction happening because it gets kind of like ashy gray. And then it'll start kind of, you know, you'll see it traveling through the flame. But like I said, it's going to be really, really hot at the beginning. So just let it be for a second or two. Actually, maybe I could pick it up like chopsticks. Let's see. Can I do this? Should I? There we go. It's all right. The little piece was broken anyway. So I didn't do much damage to my clock, which is good. Okay, so let's put that to the side. Now we have our pieces. We're going to have to paint these things. And see, I kind of made it wonky a little bit, but that's okay. It's underwater. I'm not going to worry about that too much. So these are the pieces that I've molded so far. Now let's go ahead and work with some actual molds because I think I have that pretty much down pat. So um, I want to create kind of like some water. And... Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, how are you going to have a shipwreck underwater and then have waves? So there's no waves under the water, so I'm not going to use that. <laughs> that kind of defeated the whole thing right there. Um, so maybe what I will do is maybe add some of this. Maybe add some of these little pieces, um, like some of this in there, and kind of mold it around the rim. So that's what we're going to do. And then the rest of it is going to be super easy because it's just basically the assembly and the, you know, the outside painting and such, which I'll probably do that um, all at once. I'm not sure. I'm still thinking about how exactly I'm going to pull that off, but we're going to figure it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and stretch this out and make it as long as I can. And then I'm going to use the little rope, I think this one right here the other one i think is too fragile and it has too much uh too much stuff to work uh to work with and worry about so we're just gonna kind of push that in there and push that in there and i'm just gonna use this sprayer to kind of smooth that out I'm 
trying to base to basically make it somewhat even. And then I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna pull this out. And basically do this. this way. All right. And obviously this is gonna be one of the last things that I'm gonna end up adding um, onto here. So let's go ahead and make some more. Don't fall. Please don't fall. I'm gonna go ahead and make some more. And I'm kind of debating if I wanna go with the same color sequence or not. I think I might though. Um, I think I might. I think I should make like a buried treasure as well. So maybe I'll create some kind of like buried treasure. We'll see. So let me go ahead and just do the same thing. Just trying to make sure that everything is in there. Bigger surface. Basically just trying to level it all out so that it's somewhat even. It's not gonna be perfect because the minute that you start taking it out, you start losing the perfection of the shape, but. can get these two babies to meet up. We're gonna continue to do that. We have a little bit more to go. And you just wanna pat it down just a little bit. And usually I do this kind of stuff um, before, like when I have an idea, okay, this is kind of what I want to do, or I, I know for a fact I want to use certain pieces. Um, usually I mold everything ahead of time because it does take a little bit of time, but I thought you guys might enjoy, if you're watching this playback, that you might enjoy the full process of how I use the clay and how everything kind of came to be. I'm going to go ahead and push this in again and snip right here. <laughs> and although this clock is not necessarily technically junk, um, it's definitely something that you can do with an old clock that you that has come out of style with your current decor, um, or that you just don't necessarily know what to do with. They're awesome surfaces to alter and do all kinds of things with because of their depth, um, because of their shapes. So I would totally encourage that if you find yourself uh, with a clock at home or you find a nice thrifty clock that you can get um, at a thrifty store for a nice uh, inexpensive price that you snatch it up because you can do all kinds of things to them. And you guys won't be seeing a clock project on my channel for a while because that's the last clock. And I don't think I'm going to buy another one <laughs> unless they get on super clearance and then you'll never know. But they have to be like super clearance. Let me go ahead and just put these together. We have one more piece to go, I think, maybe like one and a half. 
and then we'll be good. We'll be good with that part of it. So basically just rolling it all out. You guys can see my phone there. <laughs> halfway laying down, halfway standing up. So basically as you go rolling it, you just kind of go opening your hands up so that it kind of stretches it out. And that is usually how a little bit becomes a lot. Okay. Back in here. We're going to go right into this. I think that one's a little thin. So I'm going to add a little bit more into that one. Pushing it all in place. Trying to get those sharp lines that it has on the ends so that when I meet it up with the next one, um, it falls in sync with it. And at the same time, I'm kind of pushing all the extra that goes towards the edges and kind of pushing them back into the mold. Okay. So this one, let's see how much of this one we're going to need, if this is enough or not. And, oh my goodness, I think, I think it's enough. Now we got to remember we have to put our, um, we're going to be putting our ship in here. So I have to kind of make room for that ship, right? I have to figure out if that's going to actually work with my ship because I don't want it to work against my ship after I've dried it, those custom pieces, right? Um, so let's go ahead and just quickly. Let me see. Um, I think I'm going to switch this piece with that piece there because this piece is kind of messed up in the, from the end. So I think I can hide that pretty well here because of the ship. So let me just put this back in place and kind of fix that. Let's see. All right, let me kind of fix that a little bit. Take this little gem off right here. It's kind of messed up. And let's add this other baby right here. Let's put the right on top of that. Now be very ginger when you are um, working these pieces. So that you don't take out um, the pattern or the texture that you've created. <clears throat> My nails are doing a heck of a number on these things, but that's okay. Just make sure that that's gonna actually work for me. And I think that that'll be fine. All right, so let's dry this baby up. Make sure that on the ends, everything is kind of like together. Okay, time to heat it up. And it's not gonna be perfectly even, but it's okay. You can always add a little embellishment or something on those little bits where it connects. That's not that big of a deal. Let's try to start the chain reaction on the end of each of them. See how long that kind of takes. And you can kind of start smelling it when that chain reaction is about to start. I'm trying to start these both off at the same time. So I can move on to the next two.
Any minute now. There we go. That one has started. That one started. Put these right here. Has that reaction started? Has that reaction started? Let's see. Not for this one. Almost there, you guys. Almost there. This plug is hot. And you can tell that it's cured as well because it's not glossy anymore once it's cured. If you see if you see any shine, then it's wet still. I'm wondering why it's not um, reacting as fast. But that just has to hold it in place. Just can't hold it in place for too long because it's plastic. Yeah, it just stops though. You can see it. There we go. Find it on both ends. Okay. So let's see if there's anything else here that needs drying or assistance for that going. Right here. And I notice that it's kind of lifting as it's drying. So I'm going to have to fix that for sure. Maybe I'll break them and add them in broken. That might work. Supposed to be a shipwreck at the end of the day. So I might get away with that actually. We'll see. Wow, this is a long time. Usually it's faster than this, but this is a little bit thicker too, so keep that in mind as well. It's still pretty fast than having to um, let things air dry for a couple days. Like I've worked with cold porcelain and when that, that takes a while to dry all the way through and it warps a lot of the times when it does dry, unless you have it in a super secure place. Let me just kind of inspect this real quick and just see what hasn't cured yet. Um, I see smoke everywhere. But it has not all cured. This part is still a little wet. This part started to cure, but it didn't go all the way around. Oh, jeez. A little bit more, you guys, a little bit more. It is hot in here now. <laughs> All this heat that I'm spewing out of this thing. But 
you definitely want this to cure because it's gonna get all messed up if you don't do this right. Maybe I didn't get it hot enough and that's what happened. Wow, it's still hot. It's still hot, so it's still moving. It's still going around. There we go. And hopefully that's the last bit of it. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay. So while that's kind of doing its thing, I think it's all dry. I don't see anything that's glossy. It's pretty dry. Let, let that just kind of cool down because it's extremely, extremely high. And I still have all this clay left over. I guess I, I have enough to do another project another time. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to start working with some of the stuff that I have. If I feel like I need anything else, then I'll make it real quick if I have to. Um, I think that's enough with the clay for right now. Let's put that to the side. My hands are super greasy. So it has like this residue um, that it leaves behind when you're working with it. So we're going to go ahead now. Let's see. Let's see if we can peel some of these pieces up and kind of put them here to the side. Again, these will stick. These will stick, so um, sometimes they'll stick right to the surface. But it's pretty cool to be able to mold right on top of surfaces um, and have your pieces kind of ready to go, if you will, within a within the same day. I'm gonna say, oh, there's a piece here that didn't cure. You see, there's always a spot. Let me put that back. How it goes so that this doesn't um, get too distorted. Just that little piece right there. Come on, activate. All right, that did it. This one actually got stuck to itself. And like I said, if it breaks, like I'm not gonna worry too much about it because I already have that circular shape anyway, so I'll be able to kind of piece it together. Um, so it shouldn't be too, too, too bad. All right, so we have that. Our glass is heck of, you know, Hella dirty. We're going to have to definitely clean that before we put that back in. Um, just make sure I get all my pieces back out. Put that back in the box. Let's get that out of there. We're going to start working with our papers now. And actually, um, you know, filling this all in. So I'm going to start painting the inside perimeter of this. Uh, of this frame and I think I am gonna go with the royal blue because I really do like um how that looks on here so I'm gonna grab the royal blue and I'm gonna paint it at least with this color in common and then we'll figure out the rest and I didn't just do it or anything I'm just gonna go straight into it with the paint and I might have to give this more than one coat I'm gonna try to paint it all in the same kind of circular motion, you know, going in the same direction. So I'm gonna add a layer, dry it real quick, add another layer, just so that I know that I have everything nicely covered. This paint dries super fast, so I don't foresee there to be any issue. It dries really, really quick. And I'm just going to give it another quick layer in the inside of the blue.
And this will be coming together nicely in no time. Let's go ahead and add more paint. Okay, so just a quick little dry. And then we're gonna just add another layer. Since I don't need to worry about this being like a functional clock, I don't have to worry about the numbers or covering up the numbers. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and do this real quick again. I think that's pretty good. Right. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so we have our paper here. And this is basically cut to the same parameter of the inside of that. So I'm going to work with that circle to kind of uh, get the shape that I want. So off the gate, I know that I have too much corner. So um, I think what I'm going to do is maybe rip off this piece. And it's here. I grip that like that, and then I know if I'm gonna have to rip that, so we'll just get that out of there. From now, and I have a little something, something there. So this is where my cut apart start coming into play. In my little box, my little box of fun. And let's see. I cut this guy out from the paper. I think that's going to cover him up. So I'm thinking maybe I can kind of put him in here. We'll see. Um, I cut some fishes, but I don't know if I'm going to put the fishes. Well, yeah, I think I will add the fishes to that part of it. Um, let's see. We have some other cut aparts here. We have some more little fishes here. These are just some leftover pieces that I had, um, from doing the project on Saturday. I went ahead and cut some gears out just in case I wanted to use some gears for this one. And let's see. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And this is just the back of the paper there. Ooh, let me see. That cannot be everything. I have like a whole bunch of little bits and pieces. Where the heck did they go? Um, let me see. Oh, I have them here. Let's see, we have a little bit of a gauge here. Maybe I can add something like that, like a pressure gauge right there. Maybe this is where some of these start coming into play. So we're gonna start seeing how we're gonna kind of do all this. And I haven't gessoed these because I'm probably gonna just paint them all. But I want some of these gears to kind of pop out from the inside of that. I'm gonna have to fuzzy cut him a little bit better. <laughs> He's not all the way fuzzy cut, you guys. Oh my goodness. He's not all the way fuzzy cut. So I kind of like that. Let me just cut this little bit out. He has like all these hoses and things on him. I think this is so super cool. He 
just going to do that with my massively large scissors. And it's funny, I have smaller ones, but this is all reliable, and I always come back to all reliable. All right, so let me just kind of curve that out just a little bit right there. All right, so I think this is how that's going to kind of go. I think what I'm going to do with this guy here is I'm going to glue some paper on him, some cardstock, some chipboard, however you want to call it. I'm going to just have some scraps here. So I'm going to kind of get him prepped and ready to be a little bit dimensional. Maybe one more. And we're going to start kind of gluing some of these things down and then kind of figuring out where the rest of these elements are going to kind of go. So for right now, we're gonna do we're gonna do him. We're gonna add some glue. If this glue will let me, and this is why I keep the needle right there because I'm always having to open up these glues. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of that glue on there. I'm just kind of glue that there. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And glue another one, add a little bit more, and glue another one. And now he's got a little bit of dimension. I'm gonna let that dry, and then once I'm dry, it's dry, I'm gonna go around the edges and kind of darken him up just a little bit. So we're gonna kind of put that there. I'm gonna do the same with this one and just add a few pieces here. And since I'm not really using this as a working clock, I can add as much stuff inside of that glass as I want to. So we'll see what I end up stuffing in there, um, what else I end up stuffing in there, basically. All right, so we got that. Let me go ahead and cut out some of these fishes. I think these fishes are gonna look super cool in there. I'm gonna try to cut it out without Messing up the fish. I'm going to try to do this in a very rapid kind of way. I'm going to do this. Wait, right here. Even with these big mother lovers, I can still do this. <laughs> All right, so we have right here. I might go ahead and add some additional let's see. I got a little bit right here on the back of this. Is this too big? No, it's not. Is it? No, it's not. Perfect. I think. I think perfect. Right there. Right there. All right. So let's put that there. Um, I'm not gonna go too crazy with these fishes. I'm only gonna get maybe one more because I did use quite a few of them in the other one. And this is gonna kind of bring both pieces together, if you will. And sometimes it's a little hard to see where their mouths are because it blends in so nicely to the background. I'm gonna try to get most of this fish. No promises. Okay. I'm going to do the same here. And we're almost done, you guys. Believe it or not, we're actually almost done. 
Once the assembly kicks in, that's the fastest process. That's the fastest part of this, is the assembly. Let me just make sure that my chipboard is not showing to the back. And we have a few fishes here and there. Okay, and that's basically all I wanted with that, was to have a few fishes here and there. The mess accumulates so fast. All right, so we have that. We've got our little chipboard pieces here and there. I'm about to figure out what kind of colors I'm gonna make that. Um, I'm gonna glue these things together. Like I wanna make them like floating little boxes, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. So I'm gonna use that probably for a different project. So let me go ahead and kind of glue this together. And let me distress this a little bit. Yes, hopefully it will look amazing once it's all done, Carrie. That's definitely the goal. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So I'm gonna add a little bit of distress ink, and this is the broken china, and this is just the regular um distress ink. I'm just gonna go along the edges right here and just add this in. It kind of gives it like a teal kind of look to it now. And I'm gonna leave all of that in there because to me it's like sea foam. So I'm just gonna leave that white in there. Because he is looking for his shipwreck. Because he left his pot of gold in there. He has to find it. So I think that's the only thing. Oh, maybe I can make a chest of, okay, maybe I can still use those pieces. I'm about to see if I can make like a little treasure chest um, with that. So let me just put this here. And just kind of go around these edges a little bit with these. Just kind of add that in there. It's the same kind of process that I did for the other one with the ink. Right? Love it. <laughs> this paper line is just beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you cannot, you cannot deny it. It is absolutely stunning. And if you're a sea theme, uh, if you're a sea nautical lover type of person like I am, your jaw hit the floor when you saw this because I know mine's did. I was like, what? Who did what? When? Where? Why? <laughs> And I need to know, and I need to have it. All right, so I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to this one, just to kind of tie it all together. Kind of like so. So let's go ahead and distress these edges, and then we're gonna glue these two pieces to make it one complete circle. And remember, you guys, this is supposed to all be like under the sea, so I'm just gonna add like, let me just make sure that I'm adding this correctly. I'm just gonna add like water, kind of water, kind of like going all through this, just to add some color to it so that it's not so stark white. And everything that's on top goes this way, and things on that side goes from that side to that side, so that it kind of looks like it's meeting somewhere in the middle. All the ruckus. All the ruckus. <laughs> of the pipes. You know the pipes are noisy. They be like, ping, clang, ping, clang, all day. <laughs> right? So we have, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> um, we have Sasson here in the background, trying to hit me with some slime. All right. So I kind of like how that looks so far. Now, like I said, I did want to go ahead. Whoa, ew, <laughs> why did you touch me with that? Uh... So let's see. I kind of, let me see, let me rip a little bit more of this out. To just kind of complete that. This is all in the details, you guys. You'd be surprised. It's all in that little bit of detail. It kind of brings everything together. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. 
So what I'm going to do preliminarily speaking is I'm going to see where my, my lowest contact point is and I'm going to glue there so that I can still stick stuff in here. And I have to make sure that it's in frame with the circle because this is what's going to go inside. So I'm going to use this circle as my reference point. Making sure that it's not too small and it's not too much out of the circle point. So I have here some paper down here. So this is where I'm going to glue. Right along this edge down here. And I'm going to add this in there. And I'm going to actually distress this now that I've inked it up. Just kind of give it a roughed up kind of look. Kind of make it all janky looking. That's my new word, janky. It's not my word, okay? It's not my word. <laughs> I'm just going to use it temporarily, okay? <laughs> yes. Janky means something that I do not quite know at this moment in time. So we're going to see. Shut the front door because the back is locked. Now you're trapped. <laughs> hey, listen, he's shipwrecked, okay? He's literally trapped underwater. He can't get out. He's like, I do the man. Por favor. Um, do, 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 do. I need a black marker. Let's see. Do I need a black one? Do I need a black one? Or should I use the blue one? Do I need a black one? I don't know. I don't know. So let's see. Oh, it's too cute. Because ice cream. I'm going to use um, archival jet black. And again, I have that chipboard back there. So I'm just gonna, I kind of have this stuck a little bit enough so that I can't, I kind of have the, you know, the preliminaries. So I'm just gonna kind of just distress this a little bit more. I don't want to go too deep into it. I don't want it to get, you know, crazy dark. But theoretically speaking, I do want a little bit of that edge up here. Do you know? We need a little bit of that edge in here. Give him a little dusting. Just a little light dusting, you guys. Just a little light dusting. All right. We're going to sprinkle a little bit of this and sprinkle a little bit of that. And we good to go. Hello, my friend. Welcome back. Let's see. I wish he would have been looking outward because, like, his ship is out here and he's looking in the wrong way. Guys, the wrong way. You got to turn around. <laughs> You're looking in the wrong direction. You got to turn around. Turn around. <laughs> all right. So, and then I wanted to all tie in together. So, obviously, I'm going to add a little fishy fish right here. I'm going to add a little fishy fish right here, you guys, right here. A little fishy fish. And he's just going to be like, hey, look at this guy. He's looking in the wrong direction. <laughs> That's basically what he's doing. He's like, hey, you, sir, it's behind you in bubble speech. <laughs> blue, 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 blue. <laughs> That's bubble speech. <laughs> you guys know I think about stuff on the dime, like quick, quick. I, I'll get a whole dialect in a, in a quick second. <laughs> All right, let's see. Blue, 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 blue. <laughs> That's bubble talk. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you like that, right? Mm -hmm. You like my bubble talk? That's bubble talk. Mm -hmm. Blue, 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 blue. <laughs> yeah. Whoever watches this playback, they're going to be like, this chick is nuts. She done made a whole bubble language for the fish. <laughs> blue, 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 blue. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm the happy kind of crazy, you guys. It's all good. It's all good. No need to panic. 
blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right. I don't know about this guy right here. This thing is like humongous. This fish is like, oh, it's a snack. No, it's not a snack, buddy. All right. So let's see. Um, What color should I make these gears? Should I do them in black? Because there is a little bit of black back there. So I'm thinking maybe I can get away with like doing them in black. And maybe with a little bit of metallic something or the other over them. So I'm going to leave, put this to the side for now. But I really do like how it's, how it's happening. I haven't glued it all together yet. But I do like how that's kind of coming together. Um, and then we'll be painting the outside and adding some of the other pieces. I still have to kind of figure out what kind of sentiment I'm going to go with this. I know I have some beads and stuff like that that I do want to kind of add in there. Um, I still have a little bit of the white ones left. So I'm going to add a little bit of these, um, you know, in here somewhere. I made such a mess when I made my other... Um, when I finished the other clock, I had sequins everywhere. Oh, my goodness. I might actually... You know what? This is the awesomeness about life crafting, you guys. You'll get to see me, like, literally flip-flop like a fish all over the place with ideas. So I am going to try... Blah, 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 blah. Did you get it? Did you get the memo? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to try to make a little treasure chest. I think a little one. So... This is kind of woodsy. Let me see. I'm looking for a pencil. And maybe I can just kind of create something that looks like it. I don't know if this is going to work. You guys, because you could tell these are drawers. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to try, but nah, I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to like it. That's That's the problem. I don't think I'm going to really like it. So. I don't want to waste all that time cutting out stuff. Then I'm going to be like, eh, no, I don't think so. Um, So let's add some blue, I guess, in here, right? We can go with some black and some blues. Um, Let me get some black paint. Where did I put my black paint? Not there. And you can totally emboss them if you wanted to. Um, So you can use other things to paint them with. I'm going to go with black acrylic just to make my job quick and easy. And I think the black is going to really stand out from all this blue background. So that's another reason why I'm going to do it with the black. I think that it'll give it a nice, um, you know, depth to the whole thing. So, yes, you guys. These things are about having fun. And that's basically what I like to do when I come live. I like to have fun. Nice, wholesome fun. So we're gonna do that and I'm gonna go ahead and paint these out. I'm gonna add some paint to this and just kind of uh, do it this way. And this is heavy chipboard. I use um, my Anna Griffin die cutting tool uh, machine to cut these out. All these little gears. I love that little machine. It cuts like butter. And this chipboard's pretty thick for, you know, the range of chipboards that you can actually use in a cutting machine. And it does a good job. It still cuts through. I really like it. And it holds well to mediums and stuff like that because I use these um, this chipboard on everything. So let's see. And then we're going to get some big wheels. And we're gonna do that. I'm not gonna go so much for like a patina look, I don't think. I might just add a little bit of, um, I don't know, maybe some silver or something or some green, nothing too major. I want these things to look so rusty that they turn black. <laughs> That's what I'm telling myself, like it's been under there forever. And he's like the great, 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 great grandson on the mission to find his great, great, great grandfather's shipwreck. Hopefully, I'd be messed out a great, and hopefully, all the greats are in there. But basically, you guys get the gifs, right? So, he's out looking for gold. The mermaid found it. You guys, if you saw that video, you saw what she did with it. She decorated her whole house with it. <laughs> she put that gold everywhere. She put that gold everywhere. She said, a little bit of gold over here, a little bit of gold over there. She took all the bottles with the rest of the maps or the last messages. Maybe somebody's will and testament is in one of those little bottles. Who knows? Mm. 
But we have here great great grandson the fourth on his way to uh, find the shipwreck and reclaim reclaim his family's legacy. <laughs> See, I made up a whole story. Reclaim his family's legacy. So let's see. It totally helps me when I like, you know, as these characters start to unfold or as these projects start to kind of like unfold, it definitely helps me out a lot to give them a purpose, to give them a story. For me, giving them a story gives them a purpose. It gives me a reason or an excuse, I should say, <laughs> not so much of a reason, but really an excuse to add all kinds of stuff and get away with it because like that belongs there because he's like an ice scientist. So he's got to have like ice cubes on his head because hello, he's a scientist and he's thinking cold thoughts. <laughs> he's trying to figure out the solutions on why ice melts. So it always helps me out to kind of give them a little backstory. Um, one, two, I think that's more than enough. I think, I think. One, two, three. Um, two, two, two. Yeah, I think that's more than enough, right? Carmen, figure it out quick, girlfriend. Figure it out quick. Um, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good. I can always paint more if I need more, but I think that's good. That should be more than enough. I don't want to have to add the whole entire shine. So, and you tired in the background. She's been up all day, and I'm keeping her up still. <laughs> I'm like, no, not yet. Stay with me. All right, so let's see. Let's start to kind of put all this thing together. This dries really, really quickly. Um, Let me see what, what kind of metallic paint I'm going to use on this. Maybe I'll use a little bit. Then I don't want it to blend too much, but maybe I can use a little bit of this moss pearl. I think that that kind of matches really nicely with that background. So I'm going to add a little bit with my finger. And this is Dazzling Metallics. Again, I'll put the quick links to all of this stuff um, at the end of the at the end of the video. Once I actually figure out what I've used. That's why a lot of the times in my videos you won't find in the description area like the products right away. Because I don't know what I'm going to use until I use it. Um, so once usually I do the video, I'm trying to get into the habit of uh, kind of, ooh, that's a lot, of adding those in there. And Angie has abandoned ship. That's kind of a lot, but hopefully it all works. Hopefully it works. I didn't want to add so much. Just want it kind of like a little bit. Add a little bit of shimmer and shine here and there. Just a little, and a little bit, you know, just a little bit. Sometimes, you know, you just get a little happy and you add too much. I just want to inch in just a little bit. All right. So I think that's about all of them. Well, the ones that I'm going to add anyway. All right. So let's pull this baby back in here. Let's pull this over here. And let's start kind of figuring this out. Venus is over there having a fit. That means she must have finished her food. Our hallway is pretty long. So if she doesn't make a noise and she's finished, we won't know that she's finished to so take her bowl away. And unfortunately, she can't speak. But well, she could speak dog, but she can't speak nothing we can actually understand. So we have to kind of figure that out as we go. Okay, so. Let's see. And I have these little things here. Which I think I'm going to use to glue them all together and then probably create a little bit of a rivet there. All right, so let me go ahead and grab my glue. And I'm going to add a little bit. And this is the Dollar Tree glue. I've been working with it little by little. Some days I love it, some days I hate it. Um, 
it's kind of a weird relationship we've got going on. Okay. I'm not gonna glue everything in the top yet because I don't really know what else I'm gonna be adding here. So we're just gonna work it out like this for now. And it's kind of centered up there. And then we're going to add a few <clears throat> in other places. Just kind of incorporating them in different spots. I'm going to cut this one in half. And just kind of stick that in there a little bit right there. Now I have to trim that excess off. This is not going to all show, but I do want to um, be able to put them in different places and see kind of like how it all unfolds. And I do have my little bag of metals, but I don't know if I'm going to use any metals today. Let's see. I think maybe down here. So it just kind of gears everywhere. This is, at the end of the day, a mechanical sea world. So I think we got the gist of that quite nicely. Um, okay, I'm going to put that up there. Let me tell you something. If there's one thing that, if you like steampunk, there's one thing that you definitely have to have, and that's gears, um, die gears, gears of dies, or however you want to say that. Um, <laughs> that's definitely one of those things that you want to have because these things are so like you can use them on so many different types of projects. You can use them in so many different ways. You can paint them in so many different colors. You can do just so so much stuff with that. It's not even funny. Okay, let's see. No, I can't have a gear that just looks like it's lost somewhere. Can't have that there either. Um, let's see. Maybe there? Maybe there? Does that glue hold good for the dollar? Yeah. Um. Listen, <laughs> a little story about that whole Dollar Tree group. I used to praise the original glue because it was a different brand. It was actually called Alroy or something like that, or Alleroy. It was a it was a different brand. It wasn't a Dollar Tree brand. That glue became so popular, like this, and that was the bestest, bestest glue ever, like ever. It was an embellishment glue, kind of similar to this. Can you stop with the bottom of the chair? Yeah, <laughs> and like every time I say it's like suspenseful because you just keep getting closer and closer <laughs> with the chair. Um, the the glue. That original glue was magnificent. Then they replaced it with the other one with the Crafter Square. That thing was terrible. Now, as of recently, they've replaced it with this one, which is also Crafter Square, but I think that they reworked the, the formula. Um, because this one so far has been working really well for me, um, I must say. So far, I like it. It's a little bit for a dollar, but if you only make a tiny little hole, a little bit actually can go a really long way. So it does hold very well, I will say. No, the other one was not good. The other one went, at least for me, maybe you got the fresh batch. <laughs> for me, I got the old discombobulated batch. And by the time that I went to use it, it was like green. I was like, wait a minute, what happened here? But the original one that I used to use with the blue label, it had like a blue label on it, like a, a royal blue label, not like the baby blue label that they changed it with. Um, that one was, I loved it. That one was magnifique, magnificent. 
that was the best thing. But this, my friends, is not so great. This one's okay. It's not too bad. It gets the job done. For a dollar, it's not too bad. I'm trying to love it. <laughs> I'm trying, you guys. I'm trying hard to love it. We'll see. sure these are good i want them to actually link into each other okay i kind of like that what do you guys think it's still rather simple because again this whole thing is supposed to be shipwrecked so now i'm gonna go in and glue the bottom of this Yeah, you see the original one, and, and this is actually like a proven thing. The original one that I used to buy, the Alroy brand, I have to find out what that brand was. I wish I had an old bottle because I was I would contact that company today. I would contact them and be like, I need a whole box. Um, I glued, I had did a, a winter, it was like a Christmas um, glass, like a whole thing that I did, and I had glued in there with the Dollar Tree glue at that time. I had glued in there a whole Santa Claus that was made of glass, inside of glass, with glass all around there and a whole bunch of stuff that I added in there. Um, and I shipped that thing. I think it went all the way to California, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm in New York. So basically, it went all the way across the country. And it arrived there in one piece. She did a video and everything. And she took it out. The, she unboxed it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she's going to have, like, a bag of, like, you know, like this. <laughs> all shattered glass. And no, it actually arrived in one whole piece. I was so excited. And so happy. And at that point in time, I was like, this is like the best glue ever. And then like two months later, there was like no more glue for you. I said, what? You playing, Willis, you playing. All right. So this is pretty good. Let me, I have to add glue in here. So let me go ahead and add some heavy gel. Make sure that this all sticks down nicely inside. Let me clean my brush. I used it with a paint. Okay. Let me see. I haven't tried those. I got. I. You know which one I'm still trying to try? Fabric tag. <laughs> and that's been out for like ever. <laughs> and I'm still trying to like, you know, one day like, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. But it's like I always forget. Like whenever I'm shopping online, like in WalMarts and all those other places, I never think about buying glue there. Like honestly, I never think about buying glue. I always think about everything else that I need, um, even foam tape for that matter, but I'll never think about actually getting the glue. I have to make a mental note for myself to like order that because I heard it's very good and that it sticks all kinds of stuff, including glass and everything. And um, I work with a lot of heavy embellishments you guys have seen. Well, most of you have seen that I work with a, a lot of heavy stuff. And so I always need um, a glue that's actually going to hold everything in place for me. All right. Let me put this in here. My 12 o'clock is there. My under the sea got covered up. That's okay. <laughs> Sasson's out here doing the moonwalk. The sprinkles. So someone's ice cream. That's what it is. He's looking at me like, woman, what did you want? An unlimited marathon today? You forgot we've got ice cream. Red to go. Red to go. I'm going to just use the squeegee kind of like to push this whole thing down. Kind of press in wherever I can. Push these corners down. Okay, let me get this for the tissue. Make sure I get pick up all that glue. Now this glue is gonna dry clear, so I'm not too too worried about it. Um, let's see. We need a little bit of the seed beads, which I'm gonna start kind of adding sporadically here and there. I think I want to uh. uh 
Let me see. The other one was Curiosity and Collections. Let's see what I find for this one. Yikes. And I haven't used any gesso so far. I don't even know if I'm going to get a chance to use gesso. I might just paint the thing as it is. Let's see. So, I have here a few words. Let's see. Salvaged, maybe. Right? That might work because he's trying to go over there and get whatever he can get. <laughs> Seek and salvage, right? I wish I had another um, another and in here. I think you only get the one. You only get the one and. Um, let's see. Curiosity collection or stay curious? Which one of the two? I think stay curious maybe because the other one has to do with, yeah, I kind of like that, right? Stay curious. I could put finders keepers. <laughs> finders keepers, it's mine, it's Neo. Um, let's see. Today is full of possibilities. Today is full of possibilities. Wander, I don't want to go around aimlessly. Um, let's see, see the world, that's the underworld. I like that word seek, it keeps coming out at me. So I think seek, I wish I had the and, I feel like it's so incomplete and the English speaking person in me does not allow me to continue without the and in there. So, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. One of a kind, no. Well, maybe the shipwreck is one of a kind. Stay curious, one of a kind. I don't know if that matches with the theme. I think stay curious. Ugh, stay curious. For how long, sir? <laughs> Let's see. For how long? Stay curious and be brave. Maybe that one. I need it to make sense to me. And my mind is like, does not compute. Missing, missing. Um, Where was that? Be brave. Stay curious. I still need the and, though. You notice that, right? I still need the and. So I'm going to put that maybe on top of these gears right here. Um, I wish I can kind of tuck that in there with him. See, it's kind of hard to put things straight when you're working on something that's round. Maybe right there. I kind of like that there. What do you guys think? I think that that works. The bold print? The what? The seek? Should I just put et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> just bypass the whole thing altogether. Be like, I get it. Just et cetera. It's whatever. <laughs> um, let's see. So we don't like those too much. Which I wasn't, eh, I wasn't totally thrilled with them either. So I kind of agree with you guys. Okay. Um, we have salvaged as that sounded so wrong. Salvaged, salvaged. Okay, salvaged. Um, no notes on this one, no home and no documents because we're not documenting nothing. If anything, I'm trying to retrieve the documents, I'm trying to get the documents back. So, which ones? Salvage, wonder. Wander and seek basically mean the same thing because you're looking for and you're wandering. You're, you're wandering is because you're looking for something. So to me, it means the same. Um, seek. I'm going to put seek up here then and salvaged maybe down here. Right? Right? Seek salvaged. No end, no end. We need more than one and we're going to be trying to complete sentences. <laughs> we're going to be trying to make full sentences. We're going to need more than one and. Okay. So what do you think? That works? This one? That looks good? All right. So if we agree, my friends, if we agree, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to edge up these words real quick. And I want to say thank you, thank you for your suggestions. <laughs> I 
I love it when a piece feels ours and not so much mine, even though I'm the one that's making it, you know? <laughs> you like it, you like it, right? <laughs> All right. So, so we got that. Let me go ahead and glue this baby down. I'm just gonna put that there. Come on, man, help me out, man. Stay down. Stay down. Stay. Okay. And seek. Now I want to make sure that I've got everything in here that I need to get in here <clears throat> before I close this thing off. Do it, do it. Nothing to it, but to do it, do it. Okay, let's see. So I got, let's see. I need her to be straight, right? Straight like that. That's my eye looks straight, maybe. My vision can be a little wonky at times. All right, so we got that. Um, oh, yes, I wanted to add a little bit of seed beads, which I'm going to add around the words like I did with the other one. Again, I'm trying to make these two pieces that I can hang them next to each other. So I'm trying to make them some kind of cohesive. So I'm just going to, you know, I dip my brush in here. And I'm just going to kind of add that in there. And I'm going to add that in there. And I need to clean that quick, Carmen, quick. Clean it, clean it, quick. And it's got a little bit of the blue ink on it, which I actually don't mind because it's kind of um, giving it a little bit of tint, almost like what would be on water. So we got a little bit more glue. Just do the same thing again. Maybe add a little bit more. Yeah. Mm, let's see. Just trying to fill that in. Where's this thing? Let's see. Like I said, I don't mind some of that blue actually getting on there. I kind of like it. So it kind of brings a little bit of that blue from the edges to the inside. So I don't really mind that too much. There we go. And maybe a little bit here and there, but nothing too major. Just to kind of, just, I don't know, add a little something, something to this. And have you ever been under the water? There's always like little foams under there sometimes. Shh. Why is that? So it's been a long time since you've been under the water. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. <laughs> I know it sounded crazy. <laughs> oh my God, my mouth spoke faster than my mind can register. <laughs> That's not what I meant, you guys. You know what I meant. <laughs> I mean, under under the water, you know, sea, deep sea fishing and stuff like that. Deep sea fishing. You know, deep sea fishing. Just kind of add a little bit here and there. No matter that I don't want it. Just kind of brush that off. And try to add. A little bit like on some of the edges. Okay. 
And I think I got these little beads from like Salvation Army or something like that. Like a long time ago. You could do a lot with these little beads. It's not just for making bracelets. And I have some other color ones that I think I might actually get away with using in here. Some of this blue. And I actually have this lime greenish one, if I can find it somewhere. Oh, right here. It actually might work. I even have some black. Should I add some black in there? See. And you guys don't want to spend too much time with your um with stuff like this being wet because it's not uh conducive to your brushes. You know what I'm trying to say. Just gonna add random little beads all over the place just to kind of play with it a little bit and just add some texture here and there. And this is gonna dry clear for the most part. Some of the areas did have, um, did kind of get tinted up with some of that blue, but again, I don't mind. These could be like little barnacles that are just growing on stuff. I mean, it could be all kinds of different little things. So just gonna add a little bit here and there. Was that a yes to the black or is black overkill? I'm gonna add a little bit of this. Now I always tend to do things until I overdo them, so I'm about to stop real soon. <laughs> unfortunately that's just how it goes for me i'm not gonna necessarily wait for this to dry before i start adding kind of some of the other stuff Mm -hmm. Put this in here. After this is done, it's gonna sound like a shaker, but it's okay. <laughs> and once it's hung on the wall, it's not gonna be moved anyway. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But I did add a little bit here and there just to kind of give it a little bit of kind of like a whirly little texture there. The fish is making bubbles. Because he's out there communicating with the other fishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to live that one down, but it's okay. Probably go down on YouTube as the woman who invented the bubble talk. But that's okay. That's what is having quite a ball with that. <laughs> What's that? It's going to be bubbles. <laughs> All right. I wanted some of those to kind of look like they're going up, but I need them to kind of stick somewhere. So let me just give this a quick little blast. I'm not, not going to dry it too much, but I do want to dry it somewhat. Just so that I know that they're not going to be falling everywhere. Oh, black. Oh, I have black seed beads. I was going to add a little bit of it. Maybe around the gears. Since the gears have some of that black. Monica said, black wear. I love black. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I just need this to kind of dry so that um I can shake off the excess before I close it because if I 
close everything down and there's still wet glue and stuff in there, then it's going to stick to the glass if I move it. And I don't want to have to reopen it after I've closed it because that's going to be tough. I don't think I'll be able to do that. So I'm going to try to um, get this to kind of like not move, which it doesn't at this point in time. So I think that's pretty decent right there because it's not going anywhere. Um, and I think for this part of it, we're basically done, right? Yeah, I know that's what I was thinking. I was, I was like, I already got a little bit of black in there. Should I add it? Should I not add it? So I think I'm not going to do it if anything. Maybe I'll add a little bit to the outside to add incorporate a little bit of black on here somewhere. Um, you know, on the outside of it. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm very indecisive. All right. So we've got that and we've got that. <laughs> All right, what else do I have in here? Just looking at this little side thing that I have to see if there's anything else. I want to add in here. Maybe some maybe some seashells at the seashore. Maybe. Let's add a little bit of these seashells. Maybe I'll add this as a little bit of a black component to add in the bottom so it's not too much. I think I only have like two or three of these little ones. So hopefully this will be the ticket. Just gonna glue this kind of like right there in the bottom. And these are from those bags that you get from Dollar Tree like those bags of uh, seashells that you can basically get anywhere. All I did was basically paint it black. Um, let's see. Let's do one more. I think that's it for that. Yeah. I thought I had one more, but I didn't. This is actually from the other piece that I just did. So maybe I can do this one too. And then, um, to that blue, I mean to that black, let me add a little bit of, I think just a sliver actually of this moss. Just like a little sliver of it. Um, a little bit of that color. Let me use my fine, fine tip brush and just kind of do. Uh oh. That did not sound well. Okay, just a little bit. Again, I don't want to take away too much of that black, but I do want to kind of pearlize them just a little bit by just adding a little bit like that. Just a little bit like that. And then to this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of black since it doesn't have any black on it. And that's how I'll incorporate those two. Yes, definitely enough. <laughs> um, yeah, a little bit of this, just a little bit of this black, just to kind of, um, just kind of give it a little bit of life. Give it something different. All right. Like I said, I didn't want it to be too, I didn't, it didn't have to be too, too much. So this is what this is looking like so far. Let me go ahead and show you guys. And this is a mechanical sea world. Hopefully it's translating as such. Um, let's see. You cannot leave none of them brushes with that heavy gel glue on it. You guys, that's a spatula waiting to happen. So make sure that you are always um, 
cleaning those brushes when you're done using it with that kind of glue. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got that, we've got that. My glass is dirty, let me clean my glass because I'm gonna have to keep putting that in place sooner rather than later. Can I have an alcohol? Right hand? No. The bottle. The bottle, bottle. Okay, let me just do this real quick. Let me clean this glass. Oh my goodness, it's 10 02. So let me try. My hands are dirty, so I'm like literally trying to clean this thing with dirty hands, which doesn't make much sense to a rational human being. It's like, what are you doing? You're just getting it dirty all over again. So let me try. Because once this sucker goes in, that's it. He's trapped. Trying to get rid of all of those fingerprints as much as I can. And smudges. And I'm gonna hope and pray that this all holds well. Cross your fingers for me. And the glass is in place. I feel like it's missing something, but maybe once I put the ship, the shipwreck in place and all of that stuff, it'll feel a little bit better. So let me go ahead and put this in. And you guys are gonna have to pardon me for a second. I wanna make sure that I didn't miss nothing. Did I miss anything? I think that's pretty good. Well, I think that's pretty good. Let me go ahead and this is how what I do with the <laughs> with the screws. I tape it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out so that I can at least screw in a few of them. Have you screwed on? Please. My daughter dreams like I did not sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to observe. That's it. All right, so let me just pull out some of these screws from in here. Extra tape. Okay, that's one. Let's put this, I'm gonna hold this with my teeth for a second. And look, I broke it. <laughs> I broke it, you guys. I broke it. Where does this thing go? It goes here? I think so. Righty, tidy, lefty, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't asking. I was <laughs> yeah. Righty, tidy, lefty, Lucy. I think so. Okay. One more school. One more screw, and then we're gonna start painting and decorating the outside. That's the part that I'm like the most excited about. Is putting the whole outside together. I think with how how beautiful the mermaid one came out, like I'm okay with this one not being like a hundred stars. Like it's okay. I think it's it's decent enough to um go with the theme. 
I'll do the rest of the adding the screws in later. I just wanted to at least hold it in place for right now. Hopefully it'll hold it well enough. I think I might have to put it in place because since it did kind of warp a little bit, I'm noticing that it's not sitting quite like it was sitting before, but I do like it. I do like it. So let me just add the other two. I might as well. It's no point in going getting this far. I'll need to mess it up, right? What did I do with the screws? Did I lose the screws already? <laughs> I think I did. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's add this one. Right here. This thing has a whole bunch of them. I'm not gonna add them all. There's just too many of them. I might add maybe one more. And then it'll be ice cream time, guys. It'll be ice cream time because I'll be done. I will be done right here. Just Now one more screw to add in here. And we're gonna add it right now. We're gonna add it right now. Turn your little screw turd. My tools are a little bit too small for the screw. All right, that'll do for now. I'll fix the rest of it later on. That'll do for now. Okay, so let's see. How do we want to do this? Do we want to paint these by themselves and then add them in? How do we want to do this? I think we're gonna paint these on their own and then add them in. So the first thing I'm gonna paint is this whole thing right here. So let me play with this real quick, you guys. Let me play with this. Um, on the other one, I did bring some of that blue out, so I'm definitely going to do that, reincorporate some of that. I'm also going to add in here some of that same colors that I had in the other one. So I did use um, a little bit of this espresso. I did use, I'm trying to let my paints don't all fall. <laughs> um, not teal, it wasn't teal. There's this one up here, I think. It was the Peacock Pearl. Um, and for that uh, kind of like copperish kind of color, I'm gonna use this Royal Ruby. So again, not so much like patina-ish, but I do want the colors from the inside to kind of match the, a little bit of the colors from the outside. So basically on, on the first one, I used the waxes. I'm gonna use the paint just because it's a little bit faster um, than to be applying the waxes. So I'm just gonna go in here and just kind of do what I do. I'm actually gonna use this for a palette. Oh, that's a lot of paint. And I'm just gonna kind of brush this in. And I'm not looking for perfection because I'm gonna be adding all these different colors in there. So I just wanna make sure that it gets in. Okay. Let me put this here and kind of place my little makeshift thing here. I think this is going to be a lot of blue paint in there, so let's put some of that blue paint back in there. It's going to be a lot. Um, I'll go ahead and just kind of incorporate a little bit of that up there as well. I'm 
my first one was kind of like the porthole. I know that I made a boat and not a, you know, I made a boat and not a submarine. So there's no porthole on the boat. At least I don't think on this one. Maybe there is, but I forgot to cut it in there. Maybe it's on the other side that you can't see. <laughs> so we're going to leave it like that for now. I think that's enough. For me. Okay. Now we're going to go in maybe with a little bit of this brown, this rich espresso. And hopefully it'll just give me a little bit of pink and not a whole bunch because I don't need a lot of this. And again, I'm just going to kind of add that in there. And let some of those colors kind of blend. I don't need them to be um, the same, exactly the same. So, so we're just going to do that. A little bit of this brown right here. And you don't need a fan brush to do this. I just grab the first thing I see. That's usually how I do it. Okay, so now we've got that. Let's go ahead and grab some of our other colors, which are some of this teal. But before I do that, I am going to go ahead and dry just a little bit. I'm just going to give it a quick little whip around. I'm trying to make you guys dizzy, sorry. Okay, now I'm gonna grab some of the teal and add some of that in here. Whoa, gotta shake it, shake it. Before you use it, use it. You gotta shake it, shake it. We'll use a little bit of that teal. Again, just kind of incorporate that in there. And try to catch some of the spots that you know you didn't catch. And we are really almost done with this. The only things to really place in here after this are just the ship and the rope. And this one's gonna be uh, a lot simpler with the embellishment. I'm not gonna OD like I did with the other one. I added a lot of things because she's the collector. He's looking, he hasn't found it yet. <laughs> so he doesn't have anything to, you know, he doesn't have any prizes yet to be like, hey, I got it. Okay, so this is what this is looking like. So you guys can kind of see. And we're going to be adding some more colors. Now we're going to incorporate a little bit of this one. For this one, I'm going to use uh, another brush. I'm not going to go with this brush here. I use all my brushes <laughs> in, every, in any one sitting. I can use just about all of my brushes. And I'm applying these paints with a dry brush. And this is gonna give me a little bit more of that um, steampunkish kind of vibe. That I'm kind of going for here. And I'm just going to use up all this paint that I have here. Just 
kind of add that all in there. This is a very masculine looking kind of um, clock, if you will, with the color scheme. Very masculine indeed. And I think for this part of it, I am done. I'm gonna set this to the side and start working on the pieces that I'm gonna be adding in here as far as coloring them in. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this kind of dry. And I'll touch up anything that I feel like is missing. Well, I have this whole thing upside down. So you guys can kind of see. And I might even rub some off and add more. So I'll see how what else, how else I can give a little bit of protection, but I'll probably do that later on. The more I end up looking at it and stuff, you know how that goes. Okay, so the last things that we have here to do, put that little screw there because I cannot lose that, is actually the shipwreck itself. And for the shipwreck, thank you, thank you. Um, for the shipwreck, we're gonna go with some uh brown, some rich express. So let's make it kind of uh normal looking so let's do that and let me get this crazy looking little brush and let's just go ahead and go in there and i'm gonna add a little bit of black to this um probably around those cracked areas now i'm putting this paint on trying to cover all the edges but i'm not pressing on it because i don't know how fragile this thing is i'm pretty sure it's kind of fragile let me get a little bit of black Um, a little bit of black, just a little bit of black. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's go and just kind of go into some of those grooves and just kind of add a little bit of that black in there just to kind of give it uh, more depth. If I go too much with the black, I'll add more of the brown. Rub that in a little bit. I don't want it to be totally black, but I do want it to have um, somewhat of an aged kind of look to it. On um, parts like this is supposed to be bended, I'm going to give it a little bit more shadow because it's supposed to be kind of like, you know, bend it in. So I'm gonna try to see where all the bends are and just kind of create um, a little bit of shadow in there, just to give it a little bit of depth. I'm definitely gonna use a little bit of black under here. Run back in there so that it's not too overpowered with the back. Right? You see those bubbles? That's from how the clay cures. So you might get those. Don't be discouraged. Use it anyway. Okay. So we have my little thing that just didn't make it. I'm just gonna take that little ball off because poor guy looks hurt. Um, so for the sale, maybe the ruby color. Yeah, let's make the sale the ruby color. Maybe the ruby color and a little bit of black. Um, maybe a little bit of that patina color that's there. Just kind of clean this brush out a little bit. And um, we get some of this ruby color. I've been enjoying playing with this ruby color quite a lot recently. Um, I did an art journal page yesterday that I uploaded today, and I used a lot of that uh, copperish kind of color that is there. Again, it's a mechanical sea world. So this is a, a sheet of copper that they turned into the sail. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That is how that went down. And that's why the tears look the way that they look because it's literally 
broken metal, not so much fabric. And when metal breaks, it kind of turns and it does all kinds of weird things. So that's what happened here. Just making sure that wherever there is a turn here that I got it. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the black again and just kind of incorporate a little bit of that black. Again, it's been sitting in the sea for um, quite some time. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this and just kind of soften it up with the brush. And add a little bit of this and soften it up with the brush. And let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to check that out. She does work. So let's see. Hopefully this all works out. What do you guys think? Does that work? I think it needs a little bit more copper. I like that a lot. So I think I'm gonna leave that like that. Let me go ahead and place these in, and then we'll see what else we do and how else we do it. And then this will be just, a, oh wait, I can't place those in yet because I have to do the ring. I have to do the ring, you guys. Okay, what color am I gonna paint this ring? Should I paint the rope in black? I think I, I could paint the rope in black, right? Maybe add a little bit of that copper metallic to it just to kind of tie in some of what's going on in the inside on the outside. So, or at least to give this a base color and then we'll figure out what else we're gonna add on top of it. Make sure I cover those ends up. And cut painting this on all sides, besides the flat side, obviously. But making sure that I get it good on all sides. Let's go ahead and do that. Now this did kind of warp on me a little bit. Um, in hindsight, I think the next time I do something this long, I'll probably do it in smaller segments so that I have more control over the warping. Um, I think it worked mostly because it's such a long piece. But it's so sturdy, you guys. Like, I mean, it really, really is sturdy. And watch it just like snap as soon as I say that. But um, <laughs> it is sturdy, though. Uh, it's sturdier than I really uh, expected it to be. Like I said, it dries like a rock. Literally feels like a rock. It's very good clay. And I need more. Because I'm running out. But as you can see, I did all this and I still have a whole bunch left over. So, I mean, a little goes a long way. I made that tail super heavy. I know that. So I know that that's part of the reason why I used up so much clay to create that. Because I did make that tail really heavy. Because um, it was my first time kind of really working with that clay. I wasn't really sure how much I needed it for it to be like a nice sturdy piece. <clears throat> and I've done things with like porcelain. I'm not porcelain clay with like um, the other clay, the polymer clay where I've created my pieces and then they'll like snap super easy. And I hate that. Um, that's kind of why I started molding a lot of my pieces with plastic. I'm using one of those 3D ink, uh, one of those 3D printing pens that uses like a little uh, plastic, uh, little strand that you feed through it. And usually I use that to like fill in my molds um, and create my pieces and actually alter them and stuff like that while it's still kind of warm. So I've done them in a lot of different ways. I must say so far, 
Um, I really like this. The only thing that I'm kind of like upset about is that I can't use that clay with like my new stamperia mold that I got over at the Rusty Crown. I'm dying to use that uh, mold up. So I'm thinking about making maybe some cold porcelain and trying trying some cold porcelain in that. Or maybe even some of my polymer clay because it's pretty deep. But um, it kind of sticks to the inside and I don't like that. So I'll have to test out different things and see how I can get this clay to work with that mold. Um, and get that kind of working. All right, so let me just heat this real quick. Oh, I got one more piece to go. Dang it, I forgot. And I closed the paint and everything. Pretty much dries. Like I said, this paint dries really, really fast. And we are almost at 11, you guys. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This feels like one of my old lives when I used to be on here for hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I decided not to give myself much of a time today because I didn't want to rush through this project. And I, I felt like I rushed through the other one and I felt like it was unfair um, to all the people that were watching and were waiting in anticipation for what we were going to be creating that day. I felt like me um, shortening up the project or not being able to complete it was just not right. Um, so I wanted to do another one here in full start to finish mode. So that in case you didn't get a chance to watch that live and start to finish, and this is something that you you're interested in watching. I mean, we have nothing but time right now um, for longer videos. So if you still feel inclined to, I would, you know, let me watch. Make believe is like the movie Titanic. It's a couple hours long, but it's worth the watch. Because it's part of history. <laughs> don't don't you know? Forget about the fact you drowned in the movie. That's okay. Things happen. Just focus on the big shit. All right. So we're there, you guys. We are there. We are there. And this is gonna go right there. So I'm thinking maybe I should add more of that copper, right? Add more of that copper to it, or add some of that patina. Oh, add some of that patina from the inside, right? That that makeshift patina, that moss, mossy color. Will that go right? I don't think that'll match nice with that. Outside. So, some of this copper is. I'm just gonna put my finger on it and just kind of pick up that texture. Just pick up that texture a little bit by rubbing and or buffing, however you like to call it, uh, some of this paint right over those grooves. And then it's gonna go kind of like that. And you don't wanna add too much because you don't wanna take away the texture. Um, you wanna be able to see like the lines of black in between all of this. And I know what happened where I sealed them together on that one. That's kind of like where it got messed up. That's where it buckles. So try to make it one continuous strand if you can. If you cannot make it one continuous strand, um, then you might as well just make a whole bunch of little ones and just put them in place that way. I think in the long haul, um, for the aesthetic of your project, you'll have a better outcome. So I saw I'm already doing like the mad dash for the door. So I'm gonna try to speed this up. Now I'm gonna speed it up because ice cream awaits. And you know, we don't say no to ice cream in this house. <laughs> we don't say no to ice cream in the casa. All right. I was gonna um add um, hot glue to this, but I'm not gonna glue it with hot glue. I'm going to glue it with um, with the heavy gel medium. So I'm not going to be able to move it too, too much around um, to show you guys all of the things. I'm just going to give you a straight shot. But if you follow me on my social media, 
You'll get to see this baby from all different angles because I'll be sharing it there as soon as it's all dry. So most likely by tomorrow. Okay, so now I'm going to add some heavy gel to all of this and just kind of um, place this like so. And I don't remember exactly how they went in their specific order, so we're going to work it out like this. And we're going to do the best that we can because there's nothing else that we can do but that. So let's go ahead and add some of this on here, some of this heavy gel. I'll try to add a little bit everywhere. I don't necessarily want it seeping out of everywhere, but I do want it to kind of hold itself in place nicely. If this will dry clear, so I'm not gonna worry too, too much about that. But let's just go ahead and add that in there. Let's add this one in place right there. Let's add this one. And I just absolutely love, 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 love altering objects and items and things like this. I think YouTube or no YouTube, this is something that I would definitely be doing at home with all kinds of found things. Now again, my rope, it's not 100% on there. Once everything is dry, I might add some like further embellishments on this. Nothing too major, but at least something on each of the intersections, you know, where they all, where they meet, um, on each of the connections. Just so that I, you know, kind of cover that up nicely. I don't know what I'm gonna put in there, so I'm gonna look for some stuff. Um, but this is about done. And for those of you that have hung out with me for the whole entire <clears throat> live stream, I want to say thank you so, so much for being here. Um, I do greatly appreciate you guys being here. If you were a part of the chat, thank you, thank you, thank you as well. This is about done. My hands are so filthy. It's not even funny. I will be back on Saturday at 8 p.m. Most likely, if anything changes, I'll let you guys know, but I think I, I will be here at 8 p.m. on Saturday. Um, I have a huge uh, canvas that I want to work on. I think that's probably what I'll be doing. If I don't work on a canvas, I'll be doing some kind of a tag, like an altar tag, or maybe I'll alter a flamingo or something. I don't know. We'll see. I have a few um, large chipboard pieces there that uh, I want to play with, so I'm going to be in the look out to do that okay i don't want to waste too much time cleaning my hands i'll do that in a little bit but i definitely want to make sure that i glue this baby down and my poor little shipwreck and i'm just gonna try to add glue all along these edges that i know are going to be making some kind of contact with either the edge or the glass and again, let me just push that up against the edge right there. And let's glue this here and just stick that there. Okay, and I'm going to stick my little sail. I'm missing a piece. Where's the little thing at? I'm missing two pieces actually. <laughs> 
I think I'm gonna leave the ship like that. I don't think it needs that extra piece because it's broken. So, um, but there is a little thing that I was here. It is. There's this little guy here. Um, and let me just kind of glue him in there first. No, let me not glue him in there. Let me paint him. Do this right, Carmen. Do this right. Where's the copper right here? No, don't paint there. A little bit of paint here. All right. Let me just kind of paint this guy in with this copper color. This is the little chunky um, little piece of the wood that supposedly fell off or broke off. This is gonna go kind of like this, right? So this is gonna be kind of sticking there. So let me just look at it from this angle here, from the bottom up, so that I can kind of place this where this goes. And this kind of broke off right there. This kind of broke off right there. And then I'm gonna glue that there. And I think I achieved it. I think I achieved what I was going for. I'm very satisfied with how this came out. I think it really um, lends itself to a lot of possibilities with this clay, you guys. If you haven't tried it, definitely try it. If you're not sure what it is, like I said, I will um, go ahead and provide you guys with a quick link. And I'm gonna try to clean off some of those glues. I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm a stickler for certain details. And sometimes there's certain things that I don't mind, but if it's gonna be in the view, that's gonna irritate the heck out of me. So, I just want to make sure that that's good right there. I'm going to go ahead and beach this into some of this black, maybe. Um, some of this black right here. And I think that that's how I'm going to finish this piece, you guys, is by adding some caviar right here. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, a little bit of this caviar right here. That's what I'm going to call this one right now, a little bit of caviar. Um, this is supposed to be like the sand. There is such thing as a black sand, I've heard. I've never oh, wow. seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, <there> is. <laughs> um, so this is gonna be my version of that black sand. Let me get my hair out of here because we don't need that. And when all this is dry, all the all you're gonna see is all the little black seed beads okay. everywhere. So sometimes those unordinary things that you would see in a thrift store, for example, like this bag of beads um, that I found, you never know. That can be your black sand of tomorrow. And now it's on the of the floor, <laughs> just like regular sand would be. <laughs> All right, so I kind of like that. Stay little beads, don't you move. Because I'm trying to stick you down with glue. <laughs> you like that, right? Not really. Oh, man. <laughs> the good old days when she actually enjoyed a nursery rhyme. <laughs> Those days are long gone. All right. So I think that's about it. I feel like adding something else, I will. Like I said, I'll let you guys see it tomorrow when I when everything is dry and I can actually move it around to maybe add a few more pieces here and there. So this might not be 100, 100, 100%, you guys, but it's 
close to as hundred as I can possibly get it within one sitting while my legs are still kind of falling asleep. Now I got to kind of wake them up and get this going. I'm going to have to stretch for a little bit, but once again, I want to thank you. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today on this Wednesday's junk to treasures, uh, live show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m., I will be doing some kind of an altar project or giving some kind of an item, some kind of revival, some kind of way. So we never know what we're going to be doing until we actually get it done. This, so far, I'm really digging it. I think it's kind of very masculine and, and styling and theme. Yes, it's still missing a few little things here and there, but I'm going to get those things done. I do have to wait for this glue to dry so that I can actually manipulate it and put it in different ways um, and be able to add other additional things in here. I wanted to go for a shipwreck theme, and I think that I accomplished it. I also have a humongous mess now that I have to clean, but I think it was well worth it. Again, if you find yourself, you know, with an old clock or a broken clock or any kind of clock that you no longer want to tell time with, this is a great way to alter it, giving you purpose, giving you life. And with that being said, I want to thank you all so, so much for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, please do comment down below, like the video, share the video, and I will catch you guys. <laughs> on the next one. <laughs> Bye.